don't even have the fake picture behind me. We are live because this is uh, a huge Star Trek week, even bigger now. And it's an Ask Me Anything Trekland Tuesdays Live. Yeah, I said it. Trekland Tuesdays Live with me, Dr. Trek, Larry Nemechek. I'm totally on the laptop. I didn't have a mic stand to plug in my mic. We're working on my iPhone's Wi-Fi. Let's see how this goes. But you know what? It's number 233. Neither rain nor storm nor delayed exterminators at your place who screw up your timeline and libraries that don't have study carols privately available will deter us from appointing our Trekland rounds. Thank you everybody for hanging with me today. This was in, more insane than usual today uh, after an incredible night last night. Uh, and yes, it is actually a Trekland third Tuesday, so hang in, I'm gonna have a special in just a minute. But I'm still recuperating from the goodness that was uh, our open house last night with, uh, yeah, Mike McMahon boom. <laughs> Some of you were there. I know a lot of you were in Europe and you couldn't make it. Mike stayed for nearly two hours with us and uh, I got to do a lot of deep diving. I don't know, we had about 10-12 questions from um, prior questions and some that even came up from the audience. A uh, huge shout out to my new uh, part-time assistant Scott this year for getting us everywhere. More so, we had a bigger crowd than ever. This is our sixth anniversary for Portal 47. As you know, it's like a mini con all year long. And the open house is when it's free for everybody to come in. Uh, we had a really good crowd, good crowd. The third Tuesday special this month is I'm going to let you guys have the open house deal that I did last night. For another 24 hours, um, this was a get five months of, get six months of Portal 47 for the price of five and three bonuses, including a big 30% discount on a Trekland tour. Good for a whole year, even though the monthly package is only a six month package. That's good for the whole year for when pandemic reopens again, okay? If you're interested in that, portal47.net is the page. You can read about Portal 47, but there's a special page. That's not Ohio, that's Open House. LarryNimichek.com slash OH2021. That's the special deal. You can always go back over to portal47.net and check out the Portal package overall. So yeah, I was sitting there last night thinking, oh my God, it's such a big week. Prodigy's going to go on a break. Discovery's coming back Thursday. Everybody over on the continent was just at DST London. I had a big night last night. I've got some things maybe to share. It's going to be kind of an interesting day. And then, I swear to God, two hours ago, as many of you know, came this press release. Oh, by the way, we're canceling Netflix for uh, everything, uh, everything Discovery, for one thing. But we're going to launch Paramount Plus in the spring. Well, that's hunky-dory, but you're expecting the entire run of Discovery, a chunk of Prodigy, and uh, who knows if this will get done by the time Picard starts up, we're thinking, in February. Uh, it, uh, it's, I'm amazed, and again, everybody, if you're new to Tuesdays Live, uh, normally I don't get to the chat until I've done my soapbox, and then we take a break and do the parrots, and you know what? I didn't do the parrots. This day has been so insane. Uh, I'm sure that... Uh, Prodigy is not in the top 20, and some other shows are. <laughs> we'll deal with the parrots uh, next week. I also have a hard out at 3.30 uh, my time. So it was going to be kind of a, not a short day, but a, a, a watch the clock day anyway. So now here we are in the park. I just hope my audio is coming through and the video is going, and I've got good battery on my phone, which is powering us around the world. Um, so here I am. I'm going to dip into the chat. We won't have our normal structure today. I'm going to get on a rant here now that I've got something to rant about. And I know a lot of our overseas folks are going to rant too because they're suddenly looking at how do they avoid five or six months of spoilers from an entire season of Discovery, much less Prodigy, much less maybe even the beginning of Picard. So we're going to dip in and out of the chat here as soon as I get this off my chest and provided that my Wi-Fi holds up and we shut down in about an hour and 15. Uh, as I was scrambling around today, seeing that I was going to be out of my home office and then uh, not at the library, as I do when I'm on the road, as some of you long timers know, I saw this news breaking and I thought we have to get together and talk today. And it's another case where you, you smug little bubble wrapped Americans and Canadians, nothing changes for the Canadian package though. They're still on Crave and, and the other one. A th at least a third of the global Trek fandom is in Australia, Germany, the UK, Austria, 
Africa, I've got people tweeting at me. I mean, the, the, our Latin American friends. This is amazing. And um, people are going to be... Somebody said on Twitter, you're practicing... I am not endorsing any particular law-breaking activity. But somebody else speaking of basic human nature, and why do you have a passion for something? When it's taken away from you, you find ways to get it. Whatever your drug of choice, or whatever your back scratch of choice is. Yeah, it's going to increase piracy, I'm going to think. But it's amazing to me how in the film world, we watch the Kelvin movies totally be shaped by international concerns. Oh, look, they're animatedly flying through space with little jetpacks. They're jumping between spaceships, which are technically science fictionable, real spaceable items, kind of, sort of. But they're not very Star Trekish. But there we were. And we saw all these attentions paid to the global market. Uh, but that's box office world. That's movie world. It's amazing to me how no one is... You build this global network and then you let these things fall through the cracks. Or you just underestimate how long things are going to take. And you put all your calendars together thinking only of the domestic market when, I don't know, at least a fourth, maybe a third... And yeah, Netflix, Netflix, basically, the headline broke, a deadline had it just an hour or two ago. Basically, Paramount Plus, now that the remerger has happened, now that CBS All Access is not quite a stepchild, oh, how quickly they forget, totally financed the first season of Discovery with Netflix money, Netflix global money, which was great. It made a global audience. Yay. And then that built for second season. And then we started having the remerger plans and Paramount Mountain and all that. And great to have the family back together and building out plans now. But uh, first, I mean, it was bad enough having Lower Decks not have a plan for the first few months in the first season. Still places where you can't see the short treks, uh, the season two short treks, I think it is. But I, I, the minute I read the story, I went, where, where's, the, where's the national, where's the international arrangement? Oh, really? Next spring? Somebody mentioned it on Twitter. Why do we have a world where we can stream instantaneously and the legal eagles are still stuck in the 90s? This is not debut generations at Christmas and we have the Generations Convention in London in February. How many Pirate HS tapes of Generations got over to fans in 1994, 95 like that? I mean, this is not 1996 where the Paramount attorneys, the, the web, the cutting edge of webdom is everybody making film clips for their websites. And the lawyers are stuck back in the 80s when they people would come on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson to plug their, their show and say, uh, yeah, it's on another network if it wasn't on NBC, but they'd still have them on anyway. I mean, it's so, it's, it was a laugh. It was a joke then. It was a joke. It was an insulting joke in the 90s because legal eagles and the accountants are not up with where everything else is. So, yeah, why have a global distribution market and this kind of instantaneity and get stuck with things like this? I'm just, I am just amazed and aghast. Amazed and aghast. Okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm going to go. We're going to have a unique, we're not going to have a break. This is all going to be for the social channels later. I'm going to step back. I won't be so far behind the chat here. Hello and welcome. I should have said hello and welcome from Sherman Grove Park here in beautiful Sunland slash Shadow Hills slash Tahunga, <laughs> California, just north of Burbank. We are just north of Burbank. 233 will be the one they sing songs of throughout the empire. So I'm here. I'm on my laptop. Let's see. Hopefully the wind won't come up and the screaming baby party won't show. Very funny. Very funny. Did I invite Daleks to my home? Yes, yes. Pest control. Yeah, delayed. Ext I didn't delay them. They did. And again, pandemic has been interesting, but it made me, I've been thinking here, the world that lives like this and the world that just goes along and says, oh, well, we're going to be we're going to be a couple hours late to kill your bugs. I, you, you know, it's like, I work at home. I have a studio at home. Very organic. Thank you. Thank you for that spin, uh, Cairo. Organic. It's an organic Trekline Tuesdays Live. Yes, we're on location. We're on location. It's not quite the shore leave planet, but um, I dreamed up some picnic tables. Thank goodness. <laughs> wow. You know... You long timers know I've been on the road. There's a the library in Michigan that's the home library to my Michigan library tour I did for four years in a row. May go back to that. I got I got very used to the library rooms there. Uh, some in Oklahoma, a couple back home at Norman. Uh, the library I grew up with just got replaced by a brand spanking new four story monster. It was insane. But I was in my old library I grew up with. Um, 
one last time a couple of years ago. And I've done this in my car a couple of times. We've done this on location. I think I had Dr. Dave, maybe another time also. We were on doing the tours on a Tuesday and we stopped one time out. At, we looked around for the Risa landmark. I was sitting in uh, Dax and Bashir's concrete bench. So we've been all over the place. The other thing I learned today was that the, a lot of the LAPD library, or the LAPD, the Los Angeles Public Libraries have no study carols that you can reserve, cut off to themselves. I, and it was built in the 90s. I was like, really? This branch. Anyway, so, okay, gang, enjoy the scenery. I love I love the European take on this. Yes, Christoph, uh, bio TTL. Thank you, Linda. I think you're talking about last night with Mike. I'm a, I know I wore him out, but then I said, you know what, he's a big boy. I did occasionally ask him, are you good to keep going? Oh, I'm looking at the time, looking at the time. And, you know, he never said, okay, Larry, one more question. He was just, he's missing contact too. He didn't get to do any conventions last year. Hey, Justin, you got your COVID booster early today and you're starting to feel it. Let's see how long you last. Well, guess what? California opened it up to people under 65. And I'm, the reason I'm leaving a heart out at 3.30 is right down the street. I'm getting my COVID booster because it's been over six months and there's a lot of uh, insanity going on out there still. Kids, my granddaughter, my lovely Alice that a lot of you saw in the video, she got her first shot three days after we recorded that video. Thank you, Narda. Do you think I should think I should take a picture and fake it later? Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should do that. Uh, ah! T.L. Coco, Lieutenant Jay's in the house. Hey, girl. Good to see you. Yeah, and here we go. Uh, hello, Nadim. Is this your first time visiting? Uh, welcome, welcome to Trekland Tuesdays Live. Or your first time not lurking? Very much welcome. Yeah. Did they say March for sure? That's insane. I mean, I'm not going to ask everybody here to a loyalty test. Everyone, you need to deal with your own Trek needs as you see to it, because you weren't the ones that put yourself in this situation. Just completely just Now, I'm sure we've always said this, whether it was NBC or it was Paramount or it was CBS, what have you. Paramount Plus and CBS Viacom, it's not a monolith. There are plenty of folks. In fact, I'm sure many folks that I know, whenever they heard about this, grumbling, complaining, going, oh my God, oh my God, the place I work for. Sometimes things are unavoidable. We now know that the lower decks delay was not because of the COVID pandemic. It was because of the, the reconciliation of CBS and Viacom Paramount. They stopped everything to do all the rebranding and the relogoizing, and somebody had to dream up Paramount Mountain. That's the reason that LDS was delayed, uh, lower decks was delayed getting over to the rest of the world, it was because they had, to get, they had to get their branding kit together, their style sheets together. I was just reading that. That came out just a couple months ago. It was like some kind of Washington expose after the fact. So, was something like that going on here? I don't know. It's a lovely day in the park. We could be sipping jippers on a beach. Fun fact. Mike Mac McMahon. I almost did it again. I've got to get one of those out before I can say it right. Uh, Mike McMahon told us last night, told me last night, that um, there is no cool story behind sipping jippers on a beach. You know, his short trek he wrote, his I mud his eye mud, his hairy mud short trek that he wrote, um, which was actually commissioned after. He didn't do that and then get the Lower Decks gig. He had sold Lower Decks and was developing it and took a moment and wrote that hairy mud short trek in the first batch of short treks. Uh, there is no funny background story for sipping jippers on a beach. Apparently, jippers isn't even a drink. I just assumed it was. I thought it was some Australian thing or something. Um, Narda, you're probably laughing at me if you're back with us. Um, apparently he made it up. He totally made it up. <laughs> but that's just one of a million bits from last night. Uh, I know there is a lot of venting going on over this whole Netflix is out and Paramount. Again, the point is not that it moved to Paramount Plus, although some people may be pissed about buying that, but the Paramount Plus is not CBS All Access. There's a ton of stuff there. There's a mountain of entertainment. What's pissing people off is that there's no option until March and they're cranking out new material in the States that up until now, you had a day later. It, we're not in the 90s anymore. You don't have to wait three months or four months. No, the whole VHS tape market has collapsed, much less the DVD burner market. 
<laughs> you thought, Stephen, that CBS made me exclusive to Paramount Plus, and that's why my stream stopped. Yeah, we was right there. I mean, the cutoff. Yeah, if I'm exclusive to Paramount Plus and not getting anything for it, then I'm going to do more than have my stream stopped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was doing it as fast as I could, Captain. Hey, Captain Calvin, your question wasn't excellent, but what is that? Oh, no, sorry. Uh, what was the pest exterminator trying to exterminate wasps, horns, cockroaches? No, roaches. We've lived in our place now for eight years and never had any kind of a roach sign, and we think it was somebody around us. So there you go. There's the brutal, honest truth for all you inquiring Germans that just have to know German, right? I know. See, Narda? I knew there would be some doubting Thomases or some doubting chemical, uh, Campbells out there that would say, if it's not Plushy McCoy, then it's not really uh, Trekland Tuesday. But look, I got a logo and everything now. Here in beautiful 4.3, right? No 16.9. I'm trying to keep the uh, trying to keep the JJ effect. Look, now I'm now I'm a Paramount movie with the lens flare. Okay, yay! Delicious jippers. You better believe it, Brian. You were there last night. Uh, hi, Cairo. I have not seen you in a while, and you weren't at DST, but neither was I. DST London, where everybody talked about how they were so thrilled to ramp up the discovery. I mean, that boy. See, this is how you knew that one arm of the corporate was not talking to the other arm. I have not heard from anybody yet, but I'm just thinking right now that everybody in licensing is a little... Uh, you only just realized, due to what you said, that Netflix doesn't have Disco Season 4. So you just now went and canceled your subscription. There you go. Will CBS Viacom refund the months I had subscribed to Netflix just in anticipation of Disco... Oh, you weren't watching anything else? Wow, Cairo. Yeah, I would, I, would, I would do it online. Do social media. Ooh, here I am being all rebellious. Uh, no, I, I, you've got, we've got whole continents of fans pissed off about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, Kim. Hi, Kim Florence. Are you another newbie to uh, Tuesdays too as well? Uh, no, it's going to take more than a Netflix disco arg to... Uh, to stifle me. In fact, we I was I've just been on a high because I think things are gonna start rolling a little better for everything at Trekland. Uh, last night was awesome. And but this is this is what kills me the most is well all the fans who are going to suffer, people who are going to consider uh, seeing it through other means, or those who are actually gonna try to like squash all your social channels with Trek and not I mean the Americans again are sitting going, What? Something going on? Something happened? What? What? But um a lot of us have global fans. A lot of us have global followers and friends, and we know it's a big deal. Uh, and it should be a big deal. It's it's dinty. It's going to cost money. Cairo's already, you know, and you say, well, Netflix, that's not getting back to CBS Paramount, which is kind of the thing. But heaven forbid they have it ready to go and then yank it. I, they think, what do they think? They're going to, who are they going to, it's not like it was a competition that they didn't cut off Netflix and offered it on Paramount Plus at the same time. It, it's, that's amazing. It's not like it's going to start on Paramount Plus in a week and you have to wait a week before you can see the premiere and catch up and and people will grumble about having to, to carry the Paramount Plus. That's not even part of the equation. It's like leaving people high and dry from because lawyers don't care. And the people who do care who are corporate are screaming, but nobody can overrule the lawyers <laughs> unless it comes from the top. Who's who's running who's running this show now? It's not enough on somebody's radar. Nobody is screaming. Maybe if the world rises up as one socially and everybody overseas gets at least one American or Canadian friend to complain. Of course the Canadians are kind of out of it. They're lucky to get their scraps. I mean, they're same day little systems, but they're in such a No, you need to have an American friend screaming. Um, ooh, listen to me get all is it the 5th of November? No, we're a little bit late for that. But um, remember November. Remember, remember the 16th of November, which, by the way, is Oklahoma Statehood Day, for what that's worth. Okay. Uh, so I get the feeling everybody wants to vent here. And you're just going to wait for the Blu-ray. Well, we, um, we somebody wanted to ask Mike that last night. When will the Season 2 Blu-ray be out for Lower Decks? And I said at the time, I said, he's not going to know. He's going to say, that's above my pay grade which is about what he said. And then I said, it's usually used as a tool to promote the new season. He did say, at least on the creator's end of things, no matter what the lawyers and promoters and distribution people think, 
that could be a whole different turn. But from his point of view, their new season, season three, that they're well into, will be ready to show the world at about the same time as season two did. When did it start? When was it? September, October? I've already forgotten. Um, that it should be about that same time this year. So we'll see. Pandemic effects ebbing. You see, See, I, Dan, I thought jippers, jippers need to be made an official real drink. See, I thought that. I said last night, I said, isn't that in somebody, some fan has got to have had a recipe for jippers. I'm like, it wasn't in the cocktail book that just came out. If it's not, it'll be in the next one after it's been in four or five fanzine cookbooks before then. Fanzine cookbooks. Do we even still have fanzine cookbooks? Yeah, John. And John, you're not affected. You're, you're stateside here. CBS All Access and Paramount Plus is the shitty thing to do three days before international release. Right. Why? If, you, if you're going to appear in March, then appear in March. Cut it off then. Why are you putting people five months into limbo? Do they have an option? If there's no option for you to make the money, why do you, why do you have no money and, and make people miserable? I don't, I, I, there's, I'm sure there is a reason somewhere. It may not make any sense. It may have been made somebody totally in the closet, not in the closet, in the dark. Someone is in a cave and has no idea the repercussions or the numbers of people that this is pissing off. And maybe they know the numbers and they go, well, well, it's kind of like, you know, acceptable casualties in a battle. Oh, well, we lost a million troops, but it was worth it in the end. Yeah, Christoph, I don't know. I'm going by what somebody said. When they say spring-ish, I don't know, but we haven't heard about a thing. <laughs> I don't care about switching to P+, but you just want to watch Prodigy and Disco, damn it. ASAP. I don't know, Narda, for some reason, the first time he said sipping jippers on a beach, I just it just sounded Aussie to me. I, You know, doesn't it? Everybody, doesn't that sound something Australian? You know, sh shrimpers on the Barbie? I mean, come on. Well, that's the thing, John. Paramount Plus will be in 45 countries instead of 188. So here you go. They've the bird the bird is ready to leave the nest. The nest was Netflix that was already built. So the birdie is about to fly the coop, but the birdie hasn't got really developed wings yet. And has the birdie made a new nest anywhere? This is a tortured metaphor. They say they're going to grow Paramount Plus real fast, and they might do it even between now and March. They I'm sure they will add several countries to that tally. But the timing of this cutoff, the timing of Oh, cutting your net before you're ready to do the high wire act on your own. Sorry, another horrible. <laughs> Does this mean we should rant again? Uh, and if you're doing the here's Larry. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Brian says, I'm wondering if negotiations went until the last minute. Maybe Viacom CBS wanted too much. Or based on something Mike said last night, a different division of Viacom CBS, Paramount Plus International, made a bid that was higher than Netflix's bid. That could be. That could be. If it was bidding it out, uh, yeah. Mike also said last night that when they got the nod to make Lower Decks, it was not guaranteed to be uh, a CBS All Access show. CBS All Access came in and said, we're going to bid on it, but we'd really, really like to have all Star Trek in the family. Back in the early days, CBS All Access had been around before Discovery, but it was just the dumping ground for old shows. Original content didn't start, remember, until Discovery and um, whatever. What's her name's show? <laughs> the spinoff. Christine, Bar I can remember Christine Baranski's name before I can ever remember the name of the damn show. But the original series were starting up, and who's ever heard of any of the rest of them that, besides those two? Just like UPN. Oh, where's Platypus Man when you need it? I don't know. We'll, we will learn that soon enough, but somebody's made a huge... And you know what? It's co it's costing the money. It really is. It's not just, oh, it's just, haha, let's hang our viewers out to dry for five months. It That's going to cost them a lot of money that they could have been making. If they'd had these coordinated, they could have been taking the Netflix contract, however that's paid maybe, or maybe it's paid and it's it's kaput now. And they didn't have their, they didn't have their ducks in a row on this for the old. Yes. Yes, Rusty, an outside away mission. We're on location today. This is now on the Trekland Trex tour. There's the there's the Sherman Grove trees where I steamed streamed for number 233. Oh ho, here's a link, Nick. Hi Nick, are you new to Tuesday's Live? I think I've got a PE class walking past me here in the park. We'll see. See all that. The natives have been friendly so far. We'll see how it's going. Uh, Sky Group Sky article Viacom CBS partners with Sky to launch Paramount in Europe. Uh, I'm not Hey Nick, come back. Read the article. I'm not where I'm not about to try to 
call up something here. I'm on the laptop. I don't want to. I don't want to go. I've got the iPad over here, but I'm not about to try anything here in, in our primitive situation. So, is there something new from the sky side of this? Maybe there's something, or is that where you got the March? Is that where the March date is coming from? <laughs> Hey Robert, uh, I'm a doctor, Jim, not an engineer. You know what? I can, I could. Hey, I've been jury rigging pretty good today. When I found out the library didn't have little study, reservable study spaces, you know, walled off study spaces, I was just in shock. It wasn't like an old brick, you know, Carnegie Library building from 1910. Uh, there you go. I thought you were German. There we go. German with apophobia and asphyxophobia, fear of bees and wasps. Yeah, no, sorry, just roaches. Bees and wasps, though, are kind of contained. Once you get them, you get them. Uh, I hadn't even thought about roaches in 10 years. The Euro deal with CBS has been in place since August. Oh, you mean this was known since August? It just wasn't promoted? It's just the announcement going out of it. it, it wow. So this is like the 11th hour. Oh, by the way, if you missed the fire alarm, the building's burning down. <laughs> He's deployed lens flares. Ah, oh, wrong. Ah, yeah. Sun's very hazy over here. It's mid-afternoon. You know, it'll be dark in an hour. Insane, insane. <laughs> Deploy the lens flares. Deploy the lens flares. Uh, maybe Netflix even demanded more money back to show Discovery Season 4. Could be, could be. What do we got going here? If they have pulled from Netflix, you assume new rights issue on Disco. Yeah, I know. Again, I'm not got anything I can resource and look up right here. I'm I'm lucky to be in the park transmitting. Can you hear them? Uh, yeah, they're, it's a PE class, apparently. I feel like doing some side straddle. Are they still called side straddle hops? They quit calling them jumping jacks after the war. Oh, here's a point. Michael, are we sure the European disco issue was instigated by Viacom? Because Netflix is notorious for unceremoniously abandoning shows they don't own outright. Could be could be but i'm trying to understand if i understood you right nick that this deal has been done since august they just didn't tell anybody about it, it wasn't promoted there we go thank you christoph we're getting through to the twit for what good it is we're getting i you know in case uh he's home now maybe noah might bring another <laughs> was it chris on his stream um spent points on twitch and got the raid through our stream two weeks ago aha hi nadim uh, uh, hello again, and thank you for joining us today. You were chatting with David Ayala at DST. Oh, well, he was so hyped, and he was a Brit. He had no idea. Yeah, you know, DST is an official con, like like Creation was, like Read Pop will be in the States. Part of the reason for having an official convention that the studio is, is overseeing the license on is that you come and promote all your new shows. And what's the point of promoting all your new shows when no one where you go is going to see them for five months? That's what I'm saying. CBS, saw, uh, um, Paramount Plus, and the corporation is not a monolith. Just remember that. When you're railing about something, half the time you're railing at the lawyers, maybe the bean counters, but the lawyers are usually who's in all these things. All these things. It's not quite as simple as the old days when you could just yell at... Um, Oh, what's his name? Mr. Me Too of CBS, Les Moonves, or the the rulers of Paramount Studios or NBC back in the old days, the ones that fired Ralph Sininsky, Douglas S. Kramer in charge of production. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, <laughs> are you suggesting that Disco sucks? Not at all. Not at all. What do we got going here? Hey, Narda. You were thinking of actually paying for it, but seems you're better off waiting for the DVD too. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, Willie, how you doing? Good to see you too. Uh, everybody's catching me on Park Day, with complete with JJ lens flares attacking. Yeah, Daniel. They've sapped all the goodwill that the Prodigy premiere screening generated at DST. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, what a concept here, Christoph. If you were Paramount Plus, you would show it publicly for free globally until it's rolled out. Right. It would break. But how would you? How would you show it free? What's your distribution system going to be? Say, hey, you know, it would be funny if they said, hey, Prime, let's have a six-month contract with you. What else is, and that's a, that's a, 
that's a step down from Netflix. Nothing compares to Netflix as far as the global reach. And yes, Rebecca, it's crappy to do it with less than 48 hours to try to organize your muted hashtags. And that's if people hashtag posts. Right, right, right. And will you be able to watch TTL? <laughs> oh, oh. Well, you know, I don't always do on the nose news. Um, you know what? Well, you guys have your own Portal 47 session, although you're always welcome to join the other ones. You know, Ollie and I get into this with Life Support Live. When Lower Decks was not shown around the world the first season, we. We're in, we took our theme as being that week as inspired by Lower Decks, but we didn't spoilerize it. We would maybe show one scene and talk about a theme. Hope, I mean, some of you were probably who were there were probably going, nope, you were spoiling it. But we really did try to do a light touch and then lean into all the rest of the treks that fit that our theme that week. And absolutely, Daniel, you've just, they've just given, the, you know, not that these guys run the world. Online fandom is, again, what, a tenth, a fifth? of all fandom but um but yeah they'll have a heyday with this if they're even still paying attention uh had the wrong premiere it should have been disco well guys you know the um there's a virtual disco premiere tomorrow night wednesday night is the virtual disco premiere uh lots of us are going gonna be there virtually and i'm sure they'll show at least one probably two of the first two episodes and there'll be some kind of online thing uh, it'll be very stage managed, so I don't know. I don't know if there'll be a chat running independent of what's officially happening. But if so, um, you know, it'll only be domestic folk. But I'll be curious to see if, if the whole idea, the whole subject. It won't come up from stage. It'll all be happy talk about launching disco. Abbott and Costello was at least written out ahead of time. Excuse me. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll just, I'll just know that. I thought you were going to tell me they gave up totally today, but, uh, yeah, just, yeah, just have them... Uh, okay, okay. So he had what he had the wrong unit or Okay, now my my door is locked. That's not a problem, is it? Okay, okay. I didn't think about that until later on, but okay. There was nothing on the sheet that said anything, so I didn't think about it. But okay, that's that's fine. I'll stay away till five ish then. Okay. Uh-huh. Bye bye. No, now that was a shit show. They had the totally wrong, totally wrong address. <sighs> okay, uh, what are we doing? We've got 30 minutes. I have 30 minutes left. No, that's the Abbott and Costello sketch. Although it wasn't written either, sadly. If it had been written that well, oh, forget it. Uh, yeah, this is really... Here's the question, my global Trekkies. Um, you know, some of the interface that we have with you, like Tuesdays Live and Portal and live support and i don't know how many other live you know like mission when john does mission log that's three at night that's at three in the morning uh it's the same thing i do when i'm seven on wednesdays uh so i don't know how much big time interface our international friends have twitter is good 24 hours 24 7. Uh, that's probably the best way but you know what lean into all your american buds and let them know what's going on and uh, that everybody should, you know it's it's losing money for the corporation. Somebody's, I don't know if somebody's head's gonna roll over this. I don't know if this is just a blip in the corporate schedule of somebody's, some, you know, somebody's schedule today, but it's kind of, kind of amazing. <laughs> oh, 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 you gonna, you gonna pin this on me? You gonna pin this rap on me? No, no, no. There are very fine people on both sides. Ah, what? Oh. So you got <laughs> you got married on Guy Fox Day, Rebecca. That's pretty uh, in that Guy Fox Day. Yeah, or was is it the next day? 
See, I get I get first contact day confused. Like, is it the day of the attack or is it the day of first contact or the day of the flight? Yeah. Nadine, physical media will be obsolete by the time we get season four. Could be. Could be. But thank you for dropping by again, Nadim. It's good to see you. If, you. if you've been by before, my apologies. But uh, it's good to see you. I always love seeing new folks here on Tuesday or anytime around Truckland. Captain Calvin from Twitch is saying, although you can't read it, uh, yeah. You'll never forget your day. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Oh, <laughs> there you go. See the practicalities. It was as, as soon as you could get. Uh, and getting married on November 5th is a lot better than getting married on July 4th, I would think. This is pretty much it, Brian. It's totally a PE class over here. It's totally a PE class. There's a high school about six blocks that way. I don't know. Um, yeah, absolutely. Hey, Stingray. Uh, someday I'm going to learn your name, Stingray. Do I think International Delay of Discovery means Strange New Worlds would likely be a fall 2020 release instead of the rumored May? Well, the May is just one right after the other. It's just Disco Picard, Strange New Worlds. And the point is, by the time you get back around to maybe halfway through, if it's March, you're halfway through Picard. If it's a moot point by then... You're, you've lost a lot of countries, the reach of a lot of countries. What was it, 45 up to 120, 180? Probably gain a lot of countries back, but they probably won't be. Paramount Plus probably won't have the number that Netflix has now. They'll probably make gains on it, but they won't be there. So a lot of people will be left out. Maybe they're looking at the numbers and thinking a lot of these smaller countries where there's not a sci-fi and a Star Trek tradition, that the numbers are so tiny. It wasn't a big deal just to be able to say, we're in 188 countries. It's like, yeah, but all but 30 of them um, you know, are tiny or don't amount for much in the big hill of beans. And that's not throwing those fans under the bus. That's just, that's just the math talking sadly on the business side, but I don't think they would delay it. They just, they just go, okay, well, the international scraps are just getting overlapped double time. So I, d I don't think they would let that issue push the overall rollout for strange new worlds. If, if you mean overall and not just in those countries, I think they would make up ground as fast as they could. I would hope that would, I, th I would hope reality would, you know, two wrongs don't make a right here. Aha, see, I didn't even get to see this. The actors are just now tweeting. They also learn. Can we make enough noise to make CBS reconsider? Well, again, it may not have been CBS's decision. <laughs> Oops, class is over. It may not have been, again, it may have been, Vi it may have been Netflix, not CBS Viacom. And if it's Netflix's decision, then what are you going to do? You can't do anything. Oh, thank you, Glenn. Good to see you. Good to see you last night. It's Gigi Edgley's birthday today. Yay! The USS Tahunga, except it's T U J U N G A. It looks like Tujunga, but it's Tahunga. It's anglicized Spanish. Oh, I totally, I totally did not do this last night. I was so zonk. I totally meant to throw Mike a bone and say, hey, some season you need to have the USS Oroville because Oroville, O R O, is a city in California up north. He can totally have the USS Oroville. That would be hysterical. And guess who the guest voice could be? I totally forgot that. You guys, you, you let me forget. <laughs> Captain Calvin, yep. Yeah, the Burbank Buy More store had a real address that didn't exist. It was in this, it's where Burbank Boulevard uh, turns into LA from Burbank and the numbers change. And it's like, it's like if Burbank had annexed another two miles, and had its numbering system go on, then it would have been a thing. But since it didn't, the numbers totally became the LA numbering system. Very clever, very clever on those writers. It was, Chuck was like Star Trek in so many ways. Oh, this is why you can never have too much promo. Well, it's my annual, I do them on the anniversary. I had the first one to mark the one year anniversary. It's like, what's a real open house do? A real open house is come in, have a sample, see what we do. Whether it's a schoolroom or your business, it's like, come see, everybody come in, not just the people who are normally here. And since Portal 47 is a subscription, a paid service, it's everybody can come in for free. And if you're going to have a big special event, why not have maybe the biggest guest of the year come? So that's the philosophy. And do door prizes like an open house. 
real estate has stolen the real meaning of an open house. I had somebody say, so you're showing, how can you show have an open house when it's not live? And I go, it's the thought. But we have it every year on the anniversary. So it's usually in October, November. Last year we had to go to December because of David Carson's schedule, but um, it was worth hanging in for. <laughs> That's the spirit, Rebecca. Yeah. So, hey, Captain Kevin, I hope I told you. So I'll have another open house uh, next October, November. So, but you know, Captain Kevin, you are totally welcome to jump in on the portal deal or just the portal regular. JR, do you remember? I watched it once. I was being a good soldier and watching all the UPN shows once. You remember Marker? I remember the last season of Next Gen, the only person that had a job. Well, Patrick was going to do going to do Birdcage. He was going to play the, the gay boyfriend. He was so thrilled about it. Uh, you know, no one's going to typecast me. And the only other person in the whole cast that had a job was Gates was on Marker at UPN. Which, you know, lasted a year. There you go. The bidding of lower decks. That's what you were referring to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there could be some kind of wacky bidding thing that we don't, we don't get. Jim, I don't know what you missed. Did you mess something, Jim? Well, you know what? The world is in such a mess today. Your mess has to pale in comparison to the mess going on everywhere. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Jim. Thank you for coming by. Hey, thank you, Nick. Yes, this is the this is the deadline story that I got the alert on uh, in the middle of trying to figure out what the hell I was doing where my roach clip was. Oh, what did you miss? What did you miss? Well, the rest of the world is not going to be able to watch Discovery as of now. Our global friends are pissed about. Uh, see, it really is. It's Trekland. Trekland is bigger than you think. Trekland is not a place. It's a state of mind. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a doctor, not a philosopher. Yeah, Dan. <clears throat> Talk about taking the wind out of the sails about what was going to be an awesome Trek week. Bad timing all around. Well, of course, what do you, oh, you're in a cozy position. You're, you got nothing to worry about. But you've got communities that now are going to be divided. Worse than Lower Deck. Lower Decks was bad enough. That was 10 episodes, half hours, and just animation. I'm, I'm saying that in memory of Mike. Uh, from last night. Somewhere I've heard Discovery now called the flagship Star Trek series. I guess that's the code word for the oldest of the moderns. All the hoopla of DST in London is now just gone up in smoke. So yes, I think merchandising and marketing folks are a little pissed. A little pissed about all this. Talk about left hand, right hand not being together. There you go, Cairo. Yes, great minds think alike. They said Discovery was the flagship. May only have been finalized now it still sucks that it sucks that way yeah narda i think this is the mindset of many people hello come back yeah you waited so long to do the people that are trying to do the right thing and they make it why do they pe put people through the ringer i really don't understand how they expect to grow but there's no consciousness like i said there was a long time when in the film world the foreign market was just was just the scraps and now it's like they're the icing on top, the cherry on top, and the upper layer. Movies are totally put together with a mind to the foreign market, especially the Asian market. Yeah, it's amazing to me how TV has not caught up with that. These, it's, it's like it's 1950 again. Guys, come on. Uh, and I say guys. How many network executives were women in the 50s? Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you miss the fire alarm, you're probably dead right now. It's only the deal to distribute Paramount Plus since August. Nothing about Discovery. The deadline article says CBS have bought out Netflix and pulled Trek from Netflix. That's what I, that is the thing. CBS, CBS bought out the Netflix share. All the money that Netflix put in at the beginning, CBS has now paid them back for it. They bought out or whatever the current worth is. CBS took the step to do it. So yes, the motivation here, the inclination, the lead on this was the CBS deal, not Netflix. So there, now we're back to who's the bonehead at CBS that did this. Didn't they know this was going to just increase piracy now? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, I know that Netflix, they tend to kill things, their own stuff after three seasons anyway. Maybe they got confused and thought this was their <laughs> three seasons. It's gone. No, it's not. It, CBS. CBS initiated this. The Viacom side. Exactly, Rusty. Great minds. Great minds. This is the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing. It's dropping it two days before the premiere and after you just had a major live event, half of whose purpose is to promote the new show. Great left hand, right hand thinking there. Oh, but now I have you worried about Picard on Amazon. I, 
But don't worry, don't worry. I'm sure on February 5th, they will send out a note that it's going away from Prime. And don't worry, Paramount Plus will be here in a month or two. Lawyers are evil, one of them said, and the children shall lead. At least Discovery will do well in the parrots. Yeah, if we're looking uh, market to market. Now, if we look at the UK and the German and the Australia parrots, probably not so much. Except from the hate coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. We interrupt this program to bring you this important phone call one side. <clears throat> now, now, let's not get conspiratorial. No, no, no. Hey, I couldn't get on CBS's radar until about three months ago. What do you mean? Talk about our conspiracy theories. Look at look at you guys. I'm 10 months, 10 minutes behind this. <laughs> nice live stream you got here, usually. Shame if something happened to it. JR, do you know something I don't know? Do I have a sponsor? Have they been holding out on me all this time? Is this why I'm going to be exclusively on Paramount Plus? Yeah. On Twitter, they don't even listen when you complain about the trailers being geo-blocked. I know. I know. It's like... Uh, it's like, oh, I think we've got another another class is coming or else these guys are li lost. This is becoming more and more like, now what's it called? Uh, the movie with the bugs? Oh, right. Naked Lunch. Wow. That was a deep cut. Uh, and hi, Johannes. It's been a long time, I think. Bezos would throw them whatever money they want. Yeah, but just to be there for five months, they're going to go with their Paramount Plus plan. Oh, I am so sorry, Rebecca. Uh, how you can admin feminist trek you usually post the discussion threads. Yeah, the, the basically Daniel and you're right The basic thing is they're trying to have everything under one roof, which is fine This is the growing pains five years from now. This won't matter. I hope But it, people are living in the now and this is new material. It's, they're not talking about where to have reruns for from Enterprise This is in the now new material and it's not 1985 and it's not 2005 people are used to having the shows the next day, the episodes the next day. You set that up. Oh, look, we're living in the modern age. We're in the digital era. We have global telecommunications. Uh, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Cairo, this is kind of true, although I thought money and numbers were starting to talk the way it does in movie sides, but apparently not. Yes, apparently so. As they would say, the actors are the last ones to know. There you go. I can hear, I can hear George saying that. Well, a fan called me at home and told me that I wasn't going to be. Yeah, there we go. Oh, you just got billed by Netflix. Okay, well. Oh, I missed this. He said the Orlando was too much like the Orville. Yeah, but that was to start off. Now we're in the part where we can start having some some satirical homage type fun, maybe. Uh, it was just a thing. He didn't answer me when I DM'd that at him. Yeah. Chuck was the most amazing show to not be on the radar, to be on the bubble, yada yada. Hey, Paul. Good to see you, too. You missed the Skype call on Monday. Oh, it wasn't a Skype call. It was a Zoom, it was a Zoom webinar type show. Not main event. Well, not on Skype. But uh, we'll put it little bits out of it. Yeah, I know. I told John. John said, hey, come on Monday night and promote your show. And I said, well, it is Monday night now because of Mike's schedule. Normally, it would have been uh, tomorrow night, on normal Portal 47 night, but... <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Well, Cairo, you missed DST. So aren't you glad you had your business conference now? Because DST was just a wasted weekend. No, lots of memories for a lot of folks. I know. I, <clears throat> I'm going to watch. I want to watch Being the Ricardos. It's specifically set in one week that changed everything. So I think it's in the late 50s. It's after they're a hit. So it's way before Gene Times. It's the before Gene Times, or the BGT. Still think I need a European open house. Would you help me promote it? Uh, we might do that. I'll see what kind of a guest I can get. I can't have Mike come back. We, we, we wore him out after nearly two hours last night. He famously told Prime Video they had to save The Expanse. That's true. That's true. Hey, Glenn. Mike was a wonderful guest. You could tell his passion for Star Trek coming through the screen and his insights were fantastic. Yeah. Yes, we could have talked for, he could have talked for hours and it wouldn't have done him, you know, he had to get up and get to bed and see his kids. Um, I know that feeling, but he's got a good job. He's, that's what the, anybody connected to Star Trek, no matter what else they did say, what a great job, what a great time. Yes. Yes, it is, Captain Calvin. 
Yes, this is correct, Nick. Be Bezos stepped down as day-to-day -day running. Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. Work and then email didn't seek. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you remember that, too. I saw them at least. Uh, yeah. Don't I have this right? Patrick did the birdcage, right? He was the gay boyfriend. It's a, it's from a French play and a French movie, I think. But yeah, they did. It's the first thing he did after Next Gen was over. So when, <laughs> hi, Chris. When did Franks get beyond belief? I, I'm uh, sometime during the run of Star Trek, I think, or right after. I think it was during the run of the show. It was syndicated. He just had to stand there and shoot those little, you know, those little bits. He didn't have to do anything. Some of these shows, Nowhere Man and Seven Days were good shows. I remember one time in Communicator, we had the shots of uh, um, Roxanne was a guest star on Seven Days. She played a, she was in the Navy. She played like a Navy lieutenant something, a little female Kirk Whitehead. Uh, and we had it in, oh, look for, Bla uh, look for Roxanne on Seven Days. Yeah, they wished, they canceled them all because they didn't instantly become a CBS or an NBC. They would have loved to have had those shows back four or five years later. It's really stupid. Dan, you foresaw all this? Netflix had no intention of screening Discovery Season 4. Well, okay. What we're hearing, though, is that it was CBS's instigation, not Netflix. But okay, your crystal ball was maybe a little foggy on the details. Yeah, yeah, he was not a lead. He was not a lead. It was still a syndicated sci-fi show back then. What, what, he's going to lead in a movie like that? Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here pretty quick. Uh, UPN had Legend. Oh, my God, Legend was Michael Pillar's... Not Star Trek, Leap. Legend was done so dirty. And I think, um, I always want to say Harry Dean Stanton. Uh, you know what I mean. Lead of Stargate. Um, all the promos were about him and they never had John DeLancey in the promos. It's like watching Body of Proof and they only have What's-Her-Name as the lead and they never had Jerry Ryan in the promos. It's like, pff. it's like, well, that's somebody's contractual little uh, ego safety net there. It was amazing. It was amazing. Discovery, definitely the flagship, the most popular over time. Well, we're only talking about three or four years. I'm still waiting to see what's going to be the most popular in five or 10 or 15. Big question now will be, now that the international folks will definitely be driven towards pirating, whether CBS Paramount will manage to recoup their losses long term. I'm also wondering how much of an influence the fact that there is a new studio head will have impacted the international postponement of Disco 4. We're all going to hear about it. It will all come out. We don't hear about those... Those stockholder calls aren't coming down the way they were there for a while. I don't know if that was a Moonves thing or if that was unusual, you know, like Michael Pillar's open script policy, or if that was standard and we're just uh, the, the kerfluffle of all the shuffling of, of everything being rejiggered. Sipping rejiggers on a beach. Your husband is out mowing the lawn in the dark. There we go. Okay, standard time. It's getting darker. Yes, Brian, uh, I saw this just before I went on. It's like, well, well, we'll show you Jeopardy, and who knows how long this will last, but it's Trivial Pursuit. They're branding the license. They've got the name of the license of the thing. Are they going to go around a board and put pies in a plastic token? Or will there be human pies? I don't know. Five years from now. Well, Captain, from uh, your lips to the great bird's ears, when BBC delayed things like Doctor Who, we knew months in advance. Uh, maybe, probably. The be the Whovians can tell you. I don't know, Captain. I'm really, I don't know. <laughs> ah, yes. The mighty L.A. River. Absolutely. No fishing after dark, Robert. Yep. The L.A. River is either a great drive or a great flood. Yeah, I need to, oh, we're, I really need to wrap it up here, kiddos. Nathaniel. How was interviewing Mike? It seems that he takes over and everyone is happy to go along for the ride. Well, Nathaniel, that's great. No, I was sitting here realizing that I'm getting a taste of my own medicine. It's like, at last, I have found someone who can ignore sound bites even more than me. But that's, com that's coming from passion. He's, and I could tell he was also, like, he relishes the long form. It's not a little five-minute sound bitey, daddy daddy thing. And it's not a, oh, we're going to drop some spoilers. I hate that. They're like a waste. Who goes back and reads spoiler? Who goes back and reads the little interview moment of the week interview every week? Nobody cares about that five. The thing that matters is the long term. Let's now get into the roots. And you can't talk about roots and origins when it hasn't aired yet. It's like, spare me from promotional coy 
preview promo teaser interviews. I hate those. Until they go wrong, and then they become historic. Oh, he accidentally, accidentally dropped this. Whoops. He spoiled that, and the, his NDA was torn up in his face. So, yeah. So, Mike is just enjoying. And I didn't realize he'd had a third one. When I saw he'd had two hours, he had did an hour of Mission Log. John and Norman, he did one with Dan and Bill on Trek Geeks. And apparently, he'd just done one with Aaron, with Jesse Gender helping out um, on, on Aaron's podcast. And... I didn't know that, and I started to think about listening. I didn't want to duplicate, but then I thought, no, I'm going to do my thing because my thing has been so unduplicative after all <laughs> over the years. And that's what a lot of feedback was happening. I wanted to stop and have him talk about how the hell do they make their show? Does it still take two years to make 10 half hours? You know, what was the pro what was his thing? I wanted to talk about Warped. We talked about his short trek a little bit, his, his book Warped, coming from the Twitter account to the book and what the timeline was and anyway, so, and we did. And then we had fan questions and I let a lot of that handle that, but I had my own build up of questions aside from the Oroville. We didn't get that out of it. Uh, but no, at the beginning, I realized that if we took that much time with every instinct, we'd never get an hour's worth done. And so, but I let him do it at the beginning. We're talking philosophical at the beginning. And then we got specific as it went along. And he knew that he was like, Oh, I'm talking too much. And I'm like, no, it's, we, I want you to have some time to give a full answer. Be, just speak your heart and your passion. Gosh, guys, I'm going to have to cut the stream. You know I always go to the end of the stream, but I'm going to have to do that. You're loving the first issue of Star Trek Explorer. Yay. Everybody, I need to wrap it down. I really do. Everybody's pissed off about <laughs> Our Europeans here today are pissed off about the Netflix mess. I don't blame you. I hope you Americans understand and realize that and maybe cut them some slack in some of your streams it's kind of unfair to the americans but it's basically we're all being divided by the man <laughs> look who's doing that to us so hey just one more time as we close out gotta do my shout out to all the ttlers i didn't do it earlier hey diana hopkins robin wilson lawrence todd and marie siegel keith romback justin porteous nathaniel robinson and blaze k and our live wires, especially Rusty Harold, Halbert Gunn Johnson, Jalen Bullock, Robert McLean, Alan Hoensey, Jarrah Poole, and Casey Shafsky. A lot of them were here today. A lot of them were here last night. And thank you guys for the support. As always, it's at patreon.com slash mine trekland live. Five and ten bucks a month. It's very simple. I'm not elaborate like the rest of them there. But it's a good thing. The Trek Files is up with a voice from the 60s that's most unusual. You gotta go here. Carrie Foster, who in real life today is Emmy Lou Crawford, and um, talking about the guy she called Uncle Rod. It's a fascinating, we've got some fascinating documents, and they're not even what you'd think at first glance at the Trek Files, right? On Facebook, doing all that, all the other Facebook, uh, all the other Roddenberry podcasts, and of course, Life Support Live. We hope we'll be back <laughs> Saturday at 10 a.m. Get on the page at Facebook and ca catch up with us. Um, Ali's schedule has been all over the map with us, so apologies to all the lifers. It's been a little crazy. We're going to do something special for Thanksgiving. We can see that one coming in advance, so stick with us, okay? Otherwise, gang, you know it's Larry Nimichek's Trekland all over the place. Instagram, YouTube, please like and subscribe. And also um, YouTube. I think I said that, right? Um, Twitter is just Larry Nimichek. Portal47.net, check it out. I know I'm cutting the chat off. I never do that, but I got to clear out. Everybody, please do the things. Stay healthy. Stay woke. Keep your mind open and check out who it is that's pissing you off. They're probably just a troll or a bot, okay? Keeps you open for the real new information you might not be privy to. Otherwise, um, <laughs> from a memorable, in so many ways, episode 232, uh, Trek. Well, everybody, T-Public Store.